Let's get started. Scandinavian Portuguese. So, how does it begin? What are the first couple of moves? E4, D5, and after E takes D5, Knight F6. In today's chapter, we're going to analyze the main move for white that starts and goes with D4. Uh, according to the modern theory, this variation is considered to be the best for white. After d4, uh, Portuguese variation uh, happens after bishop g4. So you're just coming up with this bishop and amongst many moves here for white, including bishop e2, f3, and bishop b5, uh, our uh, analysis tonight will be based on knight f3 by white. So it's a very common move in practice. Uh, when I play this in uh, rapid or blitz games, I face this knight f3 very often and uh, you just go with queen takes d5. Uh, looks like uh, you just want to take on f3, but you don't want to give up that bishop just like that for the sake of the health of our structure. You rather want to go with knight c6, which is one of the classic approaches by black in this game. And uh, after you play knight c6, uh, you'd like to carry on with logical long castle and breaking in the center with even more logical e5. After bishop e2, knight c6. By the way, uh, don't forget you're not threatening bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen d4 because of intermediary bishop takes e6 check and you know, winning the queen on d4. Uh, but you do actually threaten to play long castle with the pressure on d4. Um, after, uh, you know, one of the main approaches by white is either bishop e3 or short castle. What happens if in this situation they go with h3? It's important to remember. You should never go with queen h5. Because even though it looks so similar to some other variations in this line, after queen h5 they go with short castle and you can go with long castle, h takes, knight takes because they play bishop f4. Even though it looks uh, kind of tempting for black, you've got nothing and you're just lost. So please, on h3, don't forget and don't go with queen h5. You have to take, and now you bring your queen back to d7. Once again, don't forget, you can't take on d4 for um, if you ever, ever simply forget why not uh, queen d4, bishop c6, intermediary check, and queen is gone. So that's what we need to remember. After queen d7, now you want to play long castle e5, but you also want to, at some point, after you play long castle, you want to take by knight on d4, c3, and uh, you play e5. Uh, it's a huge difference. Should you, uh, and whether you first play and go with long castle or e5. If you go first with long castle, I believe it's a suspicious approach, because now you can't play any longer e5 after queen b3, because... Uh, queen on b3 just makes pressure uh, on b7 and e5 is no longer possible for black. That's why I believe you have to play e6. Then plan could be knight e5, bishop e7, g5, h5 and so on. But uh, it's way like a uh, more less direct approach. And I prefer way more bishop f3, queen d7 and an immediate e5. When you play e5... Uh, you just attack the peak of this uh, pawn chain. They have to play d5. Those who play d takes e5, it's a common choice, uh, but it gives nothing to white because after queen d1, long castles, knight e5, it gives black absolutely fine endgame. If instead of d takes e5, they go with castles, you go with takes d4 and queen to b3. I analyze this position couple of times it's kind of a critical because they have a bishop pair pressure on b7 and even e-file is open you have to play long castle and when they take queen takes uh, bishop c6 b takes bishop e3 queen b4 queen f7 and knight d5 
uh, with complicated play where white is slightly better but black uh, definitely has uh, something to hope for for example at the moment knight to take on a3 or queen to take on b2 or just bishop d6 followed by rook goes on f8 uh, and if not d takes e5 if not short castle then what happens if queen b3 on queen b3 you're just playing knight a5 queen c2 and you take this pawn on d4 and just complete your development in the most classic fashion if they go d5 what happened in a couple of games. You play knight e7, uh, at the moment threatening to take on d5, c4, knight g6. I like this, reminds me of tango variation and opening for black because you just uh, have like full control of the dark squares. After like castles, bishop c5, and um, I really, really think that black solved all his opening problems. Uh, he's going to have like a possibility of making both short and long castle but here I prefer short castle a little bit more and uh, don't forget they can't go with knight c3 you just go with uh, short castle and like a classic approach afterwards put one rook on e8 another one on d8 and push e4 but if they go queen b3 to attack on b7 you go castles queen b7 and uh you just go with e4 rook b8 queen c6 and here on knight c3 you just go with e3 so uh, you just go with a3 and you just open up the game so i'm showing you a game between uh, nabati from israel and chattel basha from bulgaria when this guy captured bishop takes e3 of course, he has to capture an a3, queen takes king h1. And after rook takes b2, uh, black has great game. At the moment, we're not even uh, down a pawn. That's very important to be noticed. But we have to work on the b file, queen in the heart of black's game. Uh, both of these knights around the king side, and this looks great for black. Uh, look at this attractive game, end of the game. I really, really enjoyed it so much. So after knight e1, double attack, queen e2, winning like two pieces. And when he probably was hoping for uh, queen takes b2, queen c7 and some complications, this guy came up with knight h4, threatened mating one. I believe it d6, just knight e4 uh, to cover on g2, just knight e4. But the point is, he played rook g1, knight e4, and after queen c7, looks like he can't do anything. But after this, rook a to f1, knight g3, this one, and knight f3. I really like this comic way of uh, finishing the game off. And uh, that happened uh, back to 2010. Uh, and by the way, this guy uh, who had white pieces is now this 2700 GM. So I just showed you what to do if they go with this uh, immediate H3 approach. Once again, just as a good reminder, you take on F3, you go back with the queen on D7, and after C3, you play an immediate E5. If instead of H3, they go with C3, it's like more solid approach. You go long castle and you just want to break with e5. That actually presents one of the main ideas and plans by black in these positions. And if they play queen b3, you play e5. If they play queen a4, you play e5. So when they play h3, you take, take, and you actually uh, go into kind of transposition that you just want to go with uh, e5 in these positions or queen uh, f5 and e5. Those are possibilities for you. Um, Apart from h3 and c3, there are also two more moves, castle and bishop e3. If they go castle, you go long castle, and they play c4. Please don't forget about this one, because I probably uh, faced this kind of trick like 20 games so far. Uh, and uh, bishop e3 is the move, and in that case, you just play queen f5. Uh, that's the main line, and uh, black... 
seems to seems to be doing absolutely absolutely fine. But the line is c4 because it looks so logical. Then queen goes on h5. But don't forget, now h2 is possibly weak. d4 is possibly weak. And if they play like h3, you go with this beautiful tactics knight e4. If they take on g4, you have knight, you have knight takes g4. And now they can't touch the knight on uh, d4. It's untouchable because of checkmate on h2. And at the same time, you threat knight f3 followed by queen h2. And that's how you win. So after knight e4, when they take, you take. And if they take by knight, you take the queen. When they take by queen, you get a knight back and you win the pawn this way. Great tactics, very useful. And I think it's, it presents one of the basic um, things in this opening. So after once again, bishop e2, knight e6, and when they play long castle, short castle and c4, which I absolutely find very common mistake by white in practice, you go with a queen h5. We've seen, of course, if d5, you just go e6 and get a pawn on d5. If h3, don't forget knight e4, beautiful tactics. And finally, if bishop e3, which looks so logical, you have a typical break in the center with e5. D5, E4 immediately wins game for black because uh, you just win a piece. And if they play H3, you take on D4. H takes, Knight takes. Bishop is hanging. When they play like Bishop G5, F6, Bishop H4, chasing away this Bishop. So uh, you just have a decisive advantage. And finally, if in this position... Uh, they don't go with c3, h3, and castle, but if they simply go with bishop e3, which is considered to be one of the uh, most solid approaches by white and definitely major weapons, you go long castle and uh, they go short castle. c4 once again doesn't seem to be working. You put the queen on f5. And uh, uh, if knight c3, I remember a sm Smerdan in his book said that knight bd2 happened to him so many times because it gets like these knights getting, you know, these knights are getting flexible, covers the d-file uh, since the rook and the queen are in the same file. But basically he says, just learned a couple of next moves by forest d5, knight before threatening knight c2. And after this knight c2, threatening rook and bishop, and after like rook c1, knight e3, bishop c5, with a clear advantage for black. So if c4, knight f5, instead of knight bd2, knight c3, then you go with e5, d5, bishop f3, knight d4, a typical pawn sack uh, for the sake of activity of black pieces after rook e8, where black just remains with a dangerous compensation and initiative for the given pawn. And finally, if instead of c4, they go just with knight c3, you always go with queen f5 and it favors black because it gives black quite a good game. Any h3, you just take on f3 and you just break in the center with e5. Uh, finally, after long castle, bishop e3, long castle, what happens when they play short castle? Uh, it's very important to remember next move. It's queen f5. Queen h5 is bad because of knight bd2. And after h3, uh, you're just going to have like lots of difficulties. So that's why queen f5. Don't forget about this. Uh, one, I find one practical difficulty about this variation for black because there are so many... Uh, deviations by white there are so many very similar but still very uh, actually different positions and sometimes uh, you may um, somehow um, uh, change uh, the order of moves uh, accidentally and play instead of queen f5 queen h5 and the opposite anyways here after queen f5 knight bd2 once again if h3 I just want to tell you Knight d4, uh, I, I thought about d5 previously, but knight d4, bishop d4, and e5 uh, leaves black with a pretty smooth advantage. And uh, in case of c4, you just go with a typical e5, d5, and once again you chase this knight away with e4. After like knight f to d2, 
95, you're just uh, dragging all your pieces onto king side and prepared to attack. Knight c3, bishop takes, queen takes, and bishop d6. Uh, threatening knight e g4. Knight f3 type of ideas. Threatening h5, uh, h4, h3. h5, uh, and uh, just some of the knights on g4. Rook h2, d8 in the worst, but also case scenario, but also very logical move, if you like. Uh, so that's why uh, after uh, c4, e5, d5, e4, they don't go with knight f to d2, but they go with knight d4. Then you take, bishop takes, and bishop d6. I like this position for black because, uh, first of all, we're definitely a little bit ahead in development. And here we just threaten a line with bishop h2, king h2, bishop e2, queen e2, knight g4, queen h5. For example, I'm just saying one of ideas. Or you just have h5, h4, h3, and so many other things like this. I'll show you one game. In case of h3, you just take on h3 and you win. Uh, I'll show you another game. Bishop g4, knight g4, h3 runs into knight h2 and knight f3. And uh, this looks winning. Uh, bishop f6, you take on e2. You take by Quinn and but I love, for example, I like g takes f6 to open the file to maybe even support the e4 rook with rook on e8, and you just have this beautiful bishop on d6. And uh, finally, in case of rook e1, uh, this guy said in the book h5, knight c3, and play c5. And uh, he says that this, this actually gives black almost decisive advantage. The point is they can't take on c5 because of b takes. Uh, you now threaten c5 and queen is on d1. So after queen e4, literally the only move, you take, take. And this is so hard to believe, but uh, black is the one who can only push for a win, but According to some objective computer analysis, it should be around wrong. Uh, finally, if instead of rook e1, h3, and all these things, they go with the most logical move, you take, queen takes, and you go knight g4. You now threaten h2 pawn. They have to kick away this knight. In case of g3, you can even uh, consider uh, h5, uh, sacking the pawn on g7 and going with h4. But you can also consider rook h to e8 over, actually, first rook h to e8 uh, supporting the pawn on e4 and then going with the h5 and h4. In the game was h3, knight h2, and guess the tactics, knight f3. After, uh, of course, if g takes, e takes, and it's just mate. And in case of king f1, rook h to e8 and in a game of Grandmaster Lazic and Shulava, Black managed to win in a very uh, nice uh, style. And uh, all things considered, uh, in all these variations, uh, Black just looks good. So I'm once again uh, stopping on Bishop E2, that's the subject of today's lecture. Uh, knight C6, Bishop E3, and you go with a long castle. Uh, when they play long castle, you finally go with move queen f5, knight bd2, and here you play e5. I just want to point out that uh, the arising type of an endgame looks absolutely fine for black. They take, you take, they take, you take, they take, and queen takes e5. Uh, this type of uh, middle game looks more than fine for black. You solved all your opening problems. All you have to do here is just to pose some, uh, let's just say, superficial and not that dangerous threats by white. Uh, so after any knight of three, queen e4 to stop dark square bishop of moving and pinning the queen on e2. So after rook e1, knight d5. Uh, I like this knight e5. It, I don't like it only because I want to take on e3 and play uh, middle game or kind of end game uh, with a bishop against the knight with works on the board, which would favor black. Uh, but basically, um, because I can, for example, if you play bishop g5, swap off, swap off, f6, 
and start pushing these pawns on the queen's side at some point. Uh, sorry, on the king's side if needed. After bishop d6, rook e1. Here, uh, Smerton could have gone with king d7, followed by rook e8, equalizing. He played rook d7, bishop c5, and b5 to secure the knight on c4, uh, to play king b7 afterwards, and to get like a good game. That actually happened in his game against Rogers, and after knight e5, uh, they, they just continued to play on, but uh, it was anything that special for white, and they eventually drew the game.